and welcome. I'm Kushbu and you're watching Health Mantra. Today we are here with two very special doctors. Today's episode aims at helping you diagnose the early signs of a stroke. Stroke that is something that takes maximum lives in India or at least it leaves you disabled. Here when we have these doctors we get to learn more. Maybe we'll be able to help someone around us while they are experiencing some signs of this. So let, let's get to know the doctors first. To help us understand better here today, we have Dr. Safal Shetty. Dr. Safal Shetty is a consultant in neurology and Dr. Charudat Sambhaji. Dr. Charudat is a consultant in interventional neuroradiology. First of all, doctor, as we speak of a stroke, what exactly is a stroke and how can one identify or diagnose it? Uh, stroke is, uh, first of all, a medical emergency. Stroke is a condition where a person doesn't get enough blood supply to the brain. Okay, So blood supply gets completely cut off, either because there is a block in the blood vessel which is going towards the brain from the heart, or there is a rupture of the blood vessel which is going towards the heart. So uh, we divide the stroke into two different types. One is ischemic, where there is clot in the blood vessel which blocks the uh, blood supply and blood doesn't go into the that particular aspect of the brain and causes uh, symptoms. Other one is hemorrhagic where the blood vessel ruptures causing bleeding in the brain. Hence the blood in the brain can cause some amount of uh, mass effect on the brain and cause symptoms. Right now over here we will discuss mainly about the ischemic aspect Okay, where there is clot in the blood vessel and the blood supply is not happening to the particular aspect of the brain and causing the symptoms. So whenever someone has stroke or whenever someone is having an impending stroke, we find some classical symptoms. So symptoms have to be sudden in onset, that is the most important part. So it has to be sudden, that means patient was seen absolutely okay few hours back and he has developed a symptom. So what are the symptoms? Some of the common symptoms which we um, see in patients and we go by a mnemonic called be fast. So B is for loss of balance, if there is sudden loss of balance. E is for loss of vision, if there is a sudden loss of vision in any one of the eyes. F is uh, facial weakness, if there is drooping of one side of the face or there is angle of deviation of mouth to one side. Next is A arm weakness. Next is S which is speech, loss of speech or slurring of speech. And last one is T. So B fast, T is time. Okay. So someone who has had these symptoms, any one of these symptoms has to come to the medical attention within four and a half hours. That is how it is important. We will speak further on why it is important to come within those four and a half hours. But the symptoms are these, loss of balance, loss of vision, facial weakness, arm weakness and loss of speech or slurring of speech and uh, Dr. Chari will be able to tell more about the diagnosis aspect. So as Dr. Safal has um, discussed about uh, what a stroke is, you can have uh, sometimes a stroke looking uh, event which may not be a stroke or the stroke could be because of bleed in the brain or it could be uh, because of uh, lack of blood supply. So lack of blood supply is because of uh, a block in the artery which could be cholesterol accumulation or sometimes a clot coming from the heart or anywhere in line or in path of the from anywhere uh, from any of the pipes or the vessels which supply uh, blood to the brain a clot can go from anywhere from there to the brain and this causes a stroke. So basically to identify the anatomy of the stroke or whether this patient really has a stroke, we need to do an imaging. So imaging can be CT scan or an MRI and whichever is available uh, to you uh, at the earliest, you should get a CT or an MRI done. So at our place we do a CT, uh, MRI for patients who can cooperate, many a times uh, these patients can be uh, restless. So an MRI needs the patients to be a little more still and uh, allow us to do the scan which takes around 10 to 15 minutes. Whereas in a CT scan would take hardly uh, a minute or so to uh, do the scan. And uh, the main reason why do we do imaging is that uh, we want to know whether it's really a stroke and whether it's a bleed or it's a blocked artery. So uh, because the treatment 
the further treatment depends on uh, what is the diagnosis, whether it's a bleed-like stroke or it is uh, an ischemic stroke where you have a blocked blood vessel. So, uh, the anatomy of this problem is better delineated by CT or MRI and MRI scores a little better uh, when it uh, comes to delineating all these problems together. Along with that, we do something called as vessel imaging also. The blood vessels which are supplying the brain are also imaged on the CT scan or the MRI and we call that angiography. So, MR angiography or CT angiography. So, along with the scan uh, to find out whether this patient really has a stroke, we would further go ahead and do something called as MR angiography which we can do without injecting dye when you do it with an MRI. A C CT scan would always require dye to be injected through the veins to delineate the arteries. So, once this anatomy of the problem is known whether this patient really has a stroke or that is what is uh, the first thing to be uh, known uh, or it was just a mimic, stroke mimic. Stroke mimics could be anything like tumors or um, uh, some conditions like demyelination scan also present like stroke. So, once we isolate these uh, conditions and then uh, zero down to a diagnosis of ischemic stroke uh, which is commonly treated. The hemorrhagic stroke usually is conserved unless uh, it has a lot of uh, compression effect on the brain. We take them for um, uh, decompressive surgeries. So, most of the times it is an ischemic uh, stroke where we have to deal with uh, or give uh, medication. So, once we identify this patient to be having an ischemic stroke and then uh, we can actually uh, motivate or mobilize the rest of the team to further uh, treat this patient with either medicines or uh, some other uh, therapies which we'll discuss further. Okay. And doctor, what exactly causes a stroke? So, there are various risk factors for stroke. So, there are some, there is something called as modifiable risk factor that is basically uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled mm -hmm. hypertension, smoking, okay, uh, and there are non-modifiable. So, age is a non-modifiable risk factor. So, obviously, we cannot reverse aging. So, a person who is elderly is, has higher chance of having stroke than a person who is younger. Not that we don't see pa patients with uh, stroke in younger age, but relatively we see patients who are elderly or who have crossed 60 whom we see in our routine clinical practice. So, these are the risk factors. A person who has these risk factors has higher chance of getting a stroke. And as Dr. Charu told already, the one of the uh, thing is that uh, if a person has a clot in the heart, that clot can go up to the brain also through the blood vessels which go from the heart to the brain. So, that is one or if there is an excessive cholesterol deposition because of excessive cholesterol in the blood itself or diabetes also can cause some cholesterol uh, changes in the body and can deposit in the blood vessel. If the cholesterol deposition is higher, then the blood vessel gets clogged and a person can have stroke. So, these are some of the common uh, ways of how a stroke, stroke can occur, but there are risk factors which have, we have already discussed. I would like to add one point what Dr. Charu mentioned about stroke mimics. A person f has had a seizure or a fit can very well mimic stroke. Okay, If a person has had a seizure or a fit and it was one sided and no one has seen it, when the, se when the fit has gone, a person can have that side weak and it can get confused with stroke. So, that is why it becomes important to take the in history from the patient who has, uh, you know, who has uh, if he is unable to speak, if we have to take the history from the relatives. So, it becomes important for us to know who was with the patient when the patient was seen. So, that is something I would like to add on. So, these are some of the common uh, causes of stroke, how the stroke can be seen. So, in usually in stroke, you have an immediate cause which is uh, as we described earlier is usually a clot or a, b a vessel that is blocked or narrowed and uh, these conditions are usually slowly uh, building up because of the conditions that Dr. Safal has already mentioned like diabetes, hypertension. Uh, many a times you have heart conditions which can give rise to a stroke where your heart has become weakened because of uh, your uh, previous heart attacks where, where the heart is weaker and that part of the heart is not moving well. When something does not move well or the part of the heart does not move well, you have chance of clot building up there. So, something to remain fluidic, you need it to be constantly moving like your buttermilk, they keep moving it and then uh, so if you have the blood um, blood starts clotting when it is not moving. So, if a heart is weakened or has a uh, area in the heart which is uh, uh, weak, that part of the heart can generate clots and those can migrate to the brain and give rise to um, a stroke. 
So this all uh, we would analyze when a patient with stroke comes comes to us. Um, but more importantly, we'll be looking at what is the immediate cause, whether it's the vessel that is blocked, whether the vessel has got some separated layers, which we call dissection. Uh, many a times you have trauma to the neck or some uh, abnormal movement of the neck or sudden movement of the neck where uh, you, uh, one of your vessel has separated. There are layers in the vessel which can separate out. And if they separate out, we call it dissection. These these patients also will present with stroke. And so they stroke, are usually younger. Those are usually younger. So the cause of stroke would be, um, again, a clot a dissection or a vessel which has narrowed and then uh, suddenly got blocked because the narrowed segment again the flow becomes slow uh, and the vessel can get thrombosed or get clotted because the flow is slow. So these are the immediate causes of uh, stroke which we identify uh, because we need to start something uh, a, a treatment that is immediate and the associated conditions like diabetes, hypertension and all we would treat them to prevent strokes or a second attack of stroke uh, and keep them in control. Uh, to prevent further strokes. And Doctor, previously both of you mentioned that a patient needs to hurry up, basically time. So what's the importance of time in this? Why is it necessary that you have to hurry as soon as possible? So time, uh, as I told that as uh, the blood supply is getting reduced to the particular aspect, to the particular part of the brain, the nerves or the brain cell starts getting, you know, de decreased oxygen. So they start dying. And there's a particular time after which we cannot salvage those dying blood cells, they are already dead. So that means to say that the uh, disability which the patient is going to have is going to be permanent or it's going to be definitely not how he as how he was. So uh, that's why the time which has been uh, told is has to be less than four and a half hours. Okay, anyone who is suspected to have stroke should come to the medical attention, should seek medical attention within four and a half hours, okay? And not wait thinking that, uh, you know, I have not had food, that's why probably my one side of, one side of the one arm is weak or I am not able to speak, speak properly. So they should not wait. Moment they feel that, you know, something is wrong or they are not able to speak, they are not able to lift up their hand, they are not able to uh, see properly from one eye, they should seek medical attention. Unlike the patient for the heart attack, there is no pain here. So that is the differentiating point. So people who have heart attack, they have pain and they are aware that there is an impending doom happening. So they seek medical attention quickly. But over here, there is no pain. So patients, most of the patients tend to ignore it, thinking that it's going to be okay. So let me just get, go to sleep or let me have some food, I'll be alright. Fortunately, some of these symptoms may resolve, fortunately but some of them might not resolve also and it becomes severe and severe and some of them might have gone to sleep and they wake up with a much more devastating weakness on one side of the body. At that point of time, we don't have uh, that window or the time period of four and a half hours is already lost. So we cannot give a definite treatment to re reverse the whole process. So with uh, advent of new uh, medications and technology, we are able to reverse these symptoms also with help the help of uh, an injection okay which we'll be discussing a little further and also other uh, modalities of treatment which dr charu will be discussing okay so that's why the time is important so brain cells have a particular time duration with way on uh, during which they can survive so if you do not reverse if you do not open up the clotted blood or if you do not open up those vessel which is blocked then the brain cells die. So once the brain cells die, the dam damage is permanent. So that's how, that's why the time is important. So imagine a person who is a painter and his, uh, he's a breadwinner of the family and his only job is painting and he develops a stroke on the right hand and he doesn't come into the medical attention early. So we can say that he might not be able to paint again. So that such is a devastating effect of a stroke and it can cause significant impact on the family okay so that's why we keep saying that it's important you guys should come in at the earliest and we keep building awareness about the whole thing so that's why the time is important so actually when you get a stroke it's it's at the, with the patient as well as the team that is uh, managing to reduce the time 
for therapy. Uh, the uh, the reason for that is um, the brain that represents uh, your hand or leg or your speech area is very small. So when a blood supply, uh, a blood vessel which is uh, which is supplying that area gets blocked, you immediately start having death of cells, and millions millions of uh, uh, um, brain cells will die with passing time. Uh, so as we said we have a very narrow window that is around 4.5 hours to 6 hours when your stroke is on the front side of the brain so we divide the brain into the front side and the back side so when you are looking at the front side of the brain uh, which represents your um, uh, um, uh, voluntary movements uh, that part and speech that area is um, uh, th that area gives you a window of around 4.5 or around 6 hours to maximum around 8 hours to treat uh, thereafter, if we try to treat or intervene, there are chances of having complications. Uh, so we avoid or we tailor the treatment based on the age of the patient and see what is the um, anatomy of the problem by imaging and see if the core of the um, brain, brain that is already dead, whether it's small or big. So as time passes, the core of the brain that is dead starts increasing and there is a brain around that core of the brain which is still salvageable. So that brain is hibernating or it is uh, getting supply from the surrounding or the neighboring arteries or the uh, blood vessels which keep this brain, brain intact. And that particular concept or that particular reason for that uh, is uh, a collateral supply. So collateral supply comes from the blood vessels which are uh, in the neighboring territory and they keep this area alive uh, for some uh, time till you can revascularize or open up the blocked artery. So if you don't intervene in this 4 to 4.5 4, 4. to 6 hours time then this uh, brain which is at risk also will die now, now when you look at a small representation uh, in the brain which looks at a large area of body um, to be controlled then you can have um, um, a patient who is not going to be independent uh, or not going to have an independent life and life without support if we don't revascularize this within that window period. So time is very important here because the therapies um, can be given only within this window period that is 4.5 hours to 6 hours for the front circulation and the back circulation we still can extend this to around about 12 hours, 8 to 12 hours. I hope you have heard all that. Four and a half hours, we have to be careful. Any signs of it, you have to consult a doctor. So doctor, as we speak of it, how is an acute st uh, stroke treated? Uh, I had already mentioned about an injection which can be given. So if a patient comes within four and a half hours, we do the necessary brain imaging uh, and then we decide whether the patient is capable or is a candidate to get the injection. Not that every patient should receive it. If a patient is a candidate, then we go ahead and give it. Okay. So injection is given over the period of one hour. Okay, there's, a, there's another injection which can be given as a bolus. That, that means to say that it, has, it can be given at one shot. So there is a six, three to six percent risk of having a complication because of the injection in the form of bleeding in the brain because of the injection it can occur. So this is with respect to the injection. After giving the injection, there is a possibility that the person might not improve if there is a clot in the main vessel. That's where Dr. Charu comes into picture and there are therapies where we can go in and remove the clot from there. That's where Dr. Charu comes in. Actually, the, um, the window is short. So when you have a patient who's coming to the ER with a stroke or stroke-like symptoms, there's not much that the ER team has to do. They just pass the IV line and then send the patient for imaging. We diagnose that this patient has a block in the artery and this patient is in the window period. So the first thing that uh, we start or the first therapy that is given to the um, patient is starting blood lysing uh, agents or blood uh, clot, uh, clot, breaking, buster. clot busting clot or clot bre uh, breaking agents which we call thrombolysis. So this is uh, sent in through a uh, vein in the periphery of the hand or in the arm and this uh, goes to the brain, reaches uh, the brain and then lyses the clot. Now this needs some time. So in the meantime that this medicine is taking uh, its effect, uh, still brain cells are dying. 
there are times where this medicine may not work if the clot burden is high or the, um, uh, the vessel that is blocked is too large for this clot, uh, this clot blasting medicine to reach there and break it. In those scenarios, um, it was since 2013 and then um, more so in 2015 that a technology, um, um, newer therapy started uh, getting developed or the research started coming in and uh, more and more uh, studies were released or published in 2015 where they started removing the clot directly from the brain and this therapy was called mechanical thrombectomy. So, and this was what uh, Dr. Safal discussed earlier is called chemical uh, thrombolysis. Yes. You break the clot by giving medicine and here you actually go inside and you put in something like a fishing net there which we call a stent retriever or we put small catheters or tubes there and connect it to, to a suction uh, machine with very high suction pressures and just suck out the clot. So either you suck out the clot or you put in a stent retriever which is connected right up to the, uh, with a wire right up to the entry site in the groin. So you enter from the groin, you reach the site of the brain uh, with these small tubes and wires which we call catheters and wires, reach there, place this fishing net like uh, device which is called stent retriever, engage the clot in that and pull the whole assembly out. And this is called um, stent retriever mechanical thrombectomy and if you use a suction device or suction catheters we call it suction thrombectomy. So these therapies, uh, these two therapies actually changed the way we started treating stroke since 2013 and 2015. We look at uh, treating these patients in a time frame of around 30 to 45 minutes. So we call it uh, door to needle or uh, door to clot retrieval time should be around 30 to 45 minutes. So that is what we try to achieve. So when this patient comes in a window period of around 4.5 to 6 hours. So for injections, we look at a time frame of 4.5 hours. But when you are doing therapies like stent retriever thrombectomy or clot retriever, we can uh, extend it to 6 hours. Many a times we have patients whom we cannot give the injection, so in patients like uh, who have undergone recent surgery. So the surgery site is going to bleed because if you are going to lyse a clot, it is going to um, lyse the clot which is actually holding the surgical site. If patient has had a recent um, uh, head injury or even a recent stroke, one more stroke earlier to this uh, which was within a time frame of around 3 months, you can't give these uh, chemical agents uh, like uh, the ones which we use for IV thrombolysis. In those scenarios, we can uh, still do mechanical thrombectomies and get the clot out because we don't then need an IV thrombolysis because you are pulling out the clot. Okay. So finally doctor, is there a way that we can prevent a stroke? Definitely. Uh, we have to take care of the risk factors. So if a person has uh, diabetes, it has to be kept under check. If it is uncontrolled, it has to be brought back to control. Not that if it is controlled, patient will not have stroke. The chances go down. Okay. Similar uh, aspect with respect to hypertension also or blood pressure. So it has to be brought under control. If a person is smoking, then definitely needs to quit. If quitting is becoming difficult, then he has to take help, mental health help, uh, expert needs to be brought in and then it can be stopped. If a patient has an underlying heart condition or uh, there is uh, something called as atrial fibrillation where a person has an irregular heartbeat. So whenever there is irregular heartbeat, there is a possibility of causing a clot inside the heart and the clot can go up. So that has to be taken care of. And there are medications which we give to take care of uh, these such kind of conditions. And exercise is another important aspect. It's advised that you have to do moderate exercise for 30 minutes, 5 times, 5 uh, days a week. And uh, another, another aspect would be to uh, make sure the cholesterol is under control. So cholesterol check needs to be done and then uh, that has to be taken care of. So this is with respect to uh, preventing a stroke which has not yet occurred. Suppose someone has already got a stroke and uh, we can give medications called blood thinners, basically they are blood thinners where we can uh, make sure that patient doesn't have any more strokes. So these are the uh, important aspects of preventing the stroke. So when you prevent a stroke you are either trying to prevent a stroke which is not yet 
happened to this patient mm -hmm. and there you look for um, uh, the risk factors like diabetes and uh, hypertension or high cholesterol levels as Dr. Safal has uh, discussed. So and then there is a um, uh, there is secondary prevention. So you this individual has got a stroke and he recovered from it completely or there is a, a condition or a um, um, event which we call TIA, transient ischemic event. So this is an event which just happens you get some weakness in your hand or some numbness and it recovers, immediately recovers or sometimes you have this lasting for a day or so and then it recovers. So this is a sign that you have something which is uh, causing this uh, blood supply to that area to reduce so which could be a narrowing in the artery uh, which is in the range of around 70 to 90 percent or there could be something coming from the heart. So we need to evaluate these uh, patients for all these uh, things and prevent a stroke. So when you have a narrowing in the blood vessel we do something called a stenting and uh, revascularize this uh, when it is critical and prevent a further stroke which you can revascularize a vessel in the neck or also you can revascularize the vessel directly inside uh, the brain. So that is where you do secondary prevention. So primary prevention again you have to get down your uh, um, uh, risk factors like stress levels, walking is a very good exercise, a 5 kilometer walk gradually building up to 5 kilometers uh, with the speed ranging from uh, um, doing 1 kilometer at every 12 minutes and within an hour 45 minutes, 50 minutes to 1 hour you finish the walk, short step which is called brisk walking can actually get down your requirement of your BP medicines also can keep your uh, cholesterol in check and prevent a stroke uh, whether it is primary or secondary. So if you already have these risk factors still uh, you could prevent um, getting a stroke or even a heart attack which are almost similar. So any vessels in the body uh, can uh, get blocked and these risk factors are there playing um, for it. Thank That's so what much. our effort is to make sure we bring out you know we develop the awareness awareness about heart is there everyone goes to a uh, doctor if they have some pain anywhere near the chest but uh, the lack there is lack of aver awareness about stroke so we want to develop that awareness so that uh, more patients are treated and they get proper treatment before the disability is settled dr charudath dr safar thank you so much for your time thank you for enlightening us thank you for those of us experiencing any of these symptoms or anybody around you, if you see them experiencing any of these, you can always rush them to Manipal hospitals at the emergency department which is open 24-7. Also if anybody wishes to consult Dr. Safal or Dr. Charudat, they are available at Manipal hospitals from Monday to Saturday. See you again next week. Until then, eat healthy, drink plenty of water, watch out for any of these signs and consult a doctor.